with 1 to 29. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started from the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is that you you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell him, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear and the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent him, sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So praise the Lord. I greet you all in the sweet and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I do consider this as yet another opportunity to preach from this pulpit. I praise God for the mission and the ministry of uh, our beloved pastor uh, Dr. Paulson Pulikutil and uh, Pastor Wilson and others who are serving our pastor Subrabu and others who are very familiar and they are doing the mission of God through this church. I am very happy to see all of you, especially all of you. So the passage that is read to us is very familiar. That is, okay, in John's Gospel about the resurrection narratives. 
So today, morning time, I am going to speak about the power of resurrection and what is the significance of the resurrection of Jesus. Though this is not the Passion Week, okay, we need to remember always how significant the resurrection of Jesus in our life. Jesus suffered Passion. He was crucified and he was resurrected. That is why we are privileged to come to this church. It is not because of anything. It is not because of our grace. It is not because of our privileges. It is because our Lord Jesus Christ has suffered passion and he was crucified and resurrected that we are here. Jesus is no more restricted within the tomb. That is very clear. He is no more restricted within the tomb. He is out of the tomb. That is the glorious matter that we need to remember. So he is the resurrected Lord. When we go to the Pauline epistles, especially in First Corinthians, Paul is always proud about speaking about the resurrected Lord. We preach Christ the crucified. We preach the resurrected Lord. That is what Paul always affirms in his epistles. So we have a resurrected Lord. Our Lord is not restricted within the tomb. Our Lord is not a defeated Lord. But our Lord is a victorious Lord. He defeated death, Satan and sin on the cross of Calvary. So from the passage that we have read, I would like to highlight four different points. The first point is lying in verses 1 to 9. There we see that the resurrection and the events of that day. What happened on the day of resurrection? That is the significant point we have to look at first. Is that early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. You see that? When we come to John's Gospel, it is not a group of women going to the tomb. But it is clearly mentioned that Mary Magdalene alone goes to the tomb. It is very hard to understand. It's right? A woman alone going early in the morning to the tomb. Okay? It is not an auspicious place, but it is a very hard place where this woman is going. That is, early on the first day of the week. So when she has reached there, what she had seen? The stone had been removed from the entrance. The stone was removed from the entrance. After seeing this scene, she runs and reports the events to Peter and the beloved disciple. And she said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. She was very much worried because her love for the Lord was so significant. Her love for the Lord was so significant. And she was always around Jesus, the suffering Jesus, the crucified Jesus. And she was always around the tomb. And she was waiting to see what is happening for the Lord. And she is complaining to Peter and the beloved disciple that they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we don't know where the, they have put him. So when we come to Matthew's gospel, it is very clear. Okay? It was a rumor that Jesus' dead body was stolen. So she is coming to such a conclusion that Jesus' body would have been stolen. That is why she is crying unto Jesus. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. I am too much worried. I am too much worried. I don't know where our Lord's body is. And you see, my dear friends, when we read the following verses, we see that when she actually reached the tomb, what she had seen, the strips of the linen were lying there. The strips of the linen were lying there. You start during the usual Jewish burial system, 
two kinds of clothes are used okay in order to bury a person the first kind of cloth is linen clothes so is that when she was looking okay into the tomb she could see that the linen clothes were lying there but at the same time another cloth to cover the head and the face of the dead body that is napkin clothes that is called the saldarion that was also folded and kept nicely there you see my dear friends both the linen clothes and the napkin clothes were within the tomb but jesus is disappearing that is why she was crying aloud and she was looking for our lord jesus christ what would have happened for my lord whether somebody had stolen our lord jesus dead body in that way she was very much dismayed and she was searching for jesus and she was complaining to the disciples and she was so much worried about our lord jesus christ and in that way you see my dear friends the burial cloth that had been around jesus head was folded very nicely and kept there that shows jesus resurrection was unique jesus was indeed resurrected in john's gospel we see another resurrection the resurrection of lazarus in chapter 11 jesus told lazar come out lazarus come out what was happening lazarus came out from the tomb as a bound person okay both the linen clothes and the napkin clothes were on his body that is the way he was coming out but when we come to jesus resurrection what we see the linen clothes are lying there within the tomb and the napkin clothes are nicely folded and kept there that shows jesus resurrection was unique so my dear friends when i talk about the resurrection of jesus it is not a fable it is not a story that was created by somebody but rather it is a unique story it happened indeed in the history of humanity why it happened that our lord jesus christ defeated sin he defeated satan and he defeated death on the cross of calvary and in that way jesus was coming out of death jesus was defeating death for us jesus was giving us a new hope and jesus was giving us a new future do you believe that jesus is still there as the resurrected jesus as paul is preaching always i am not preaching a died jesus i am not preaching a jesus who is a normal man or now ordinary man but i am preaching about a jesus who is indeed resurrected i am preaching about a jesus who died for us i am preaching about a jesus who is the resurrected lord that is what paul is preaching all through his epistles and here we see that there is evidence for the resurrection of jesus jesus was indeed resurrected that we need to believe so my dear friends why we need to worry so when i look from here some of you look very gloomy and your faces are not shining maybe you may be worrying about a lot of things it is not necessary to worry why we have a resurrected lord our lord jesus christ is indeed resurrected the evidence is show within the annals of the bible that our lord jesus christ was indeed resurrected so we see that peter is a witness for that the beloved disciple is a witness for that and mary magdalene is a witness for that the 11 disciples around jesus were witnesses for that and even thomas was an individual witness for that they all witnessed that our lord jesus christ is indeed resurrected so it is not necessary to worry today morning time is a time of happiness 
joyfulness the kingdom of god is not a matter of eating and drinking it is righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit we need to rejoice in the presence of our lord jesus christ why we need to rejoice because we are worshiping a god who is indeed resurrected from the dead and he has given us hope for the future we have a hope for the future we are not a group of people who are pessimists but rather we are a group of optimists in the presence of god because our lord jesus christ has opened a great future for us and we all are waiting for the coming of the kingdom of god in its full strength in the future so in that case the resurrection of lord our lord jesus christ is indeed the glorious point in the history of humanity so we need to remember the resurrected lord always and almost always in our lives the second important thing how the history was happening you see that when we come to chapter 20 verses 10 to 18 jesus appears to mary magdalene for the first time the disciples went to their homes after seeing the empty tomb mary stands outside the tomb and she was bitterly weeping because she thought that the dead body of jesus was stolen for some chemical purpose and she was indeed crying and she also didn't believe that jesus was indeed resurrected but rather she thought that his dead body would have been stolen she weeps and looks into the tomb what is happening she sees two angels within the tomb one at the head and one at the foot of jesus they asked the woman woman why are you crying you see my dear friends we all are crying and we all are sad we all are having different problems we may be bitterly weeping several times alone within our closed room but the world may not understand our problems our difficulties our issues and our various other concerns but you see that here this woman is also crying and because she was bitterly in a difficult position so is that she says they have taken my lord away what she had already told to peter and the beloved disciple the same thing she is telling unto the angels too they have taken my lord away that man means that was worrying her too much she is continuously speaking about that because that was a great concern for her at that particular juncture and she was always thinking about her lord she was always concerned of her lord because she was much closer to jesus christ so is that someone was standing there but she was not able to recognize who that person was in reality that was jesus christ she considered him as a gardener but she realizes him as jesus later on jesus and that he is indeed resurrected and she was having a personal grievance the tears were rolling down from her, uh, her eyes and because of her eyes were blurred with the tears she was not able to recognize jesus my dear friends sometimes jesus is always around us jesus is always in front of us jesus is always one step beside us but we are sometimes not able to recognize jesus we are not able to understand jesus why because we are worried of several things because we our eyes are blurred with the tears we are not able to recognize jesus that is what is happening in the life of mary magdalene she was weeping weeping and bitterly weeping because of her tears she was not able to realize jesus but jesus is on step in front of her jesus is beside her 
but she is not able to recognize Jesus. Is it the situation in your life? Are you confronting struggles? Are you con confronting problems? Do you have personal issues? Do you have family issues? Are you worried about your children? Are you worried about your parents? Are you worried about your relatives? But my friends, you can call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is able to satisfy you. He is able to give you a new hope. He is able to give you a new life. Indeed, He is the resurrection and life. That is clearly mentioned. You see, my dear friends, Jesus is first of all appearing to a woman, Mary Magdalene. That may be the reason why she is considered as an apostle to the apostles. The first apostle. Because she witnessed indeed the resurrected Lord. Did you saw the resurrected Lord in your life? Through the scriptures, through various testimonies, through the meditations, through prayers, through personal interaction with Jesus, we can accept and testify and realize the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in our life. You see, my dear friends, this is a personal testimony of a woman that I have witnessed Jesus. I have seen Jesus. I have personally testified Jesus. I have personally tasted Jesus. Did you ever taste Jesus in your life? That is very important. As we are the followers of Jesus, as we are men and women of God, it is very important that we need to personally Taste our Lord Jesus Christ. And we must know that Jesus is so good. He can transform our lives. He can bring joyfulness in our lives. He can bring happiness in our lives. He can remove all the sorrows from our life. He can give you a new hope. As he is a God who personally intervenes with the people. Today, the same Lord Jesus Christ is here. Can you personally having an interaction with our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ? As Mary's eyes were blurred because of tears, she was not able to recognize our Lord Jesus Christ. But he is right in front of her. That may be the situation in your life. You may be entangled with a lot of problems of this world. You may be suffering you may be indeed always thoughtful about Jesus, but you are not able to see Jesus. You are not able to experience Jesus. You are not able to witness Jesus. Maybe because your eyes are blurred with the tears, because of you are entangled with a lot of problems of this world. So my dear friends, this is the right time to testify Jesus. This is the right time to witness our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the right time to experience that the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ is so good. He is the great God. He is a wonderful God who can satisfy us with all the blessings. In the first century context, so is that Jesus is appearing to a woman and she was able to witness Jesus. And she became a great witness of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus told, Go ye into all the world. Preach, teach, baptize in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And make everybody my disciples. This is the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here we see a woman taking up those words, going out and preaching about the resurrected Lord. God was using her as an instrument of okay, the proclamation of the good news of salvation. The third important thing we see in chapter 20 verses 19 till 23. Jesus appears to the disciples while Thomas is absent. That happens on the same day evening time. What is happening there? On the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were 
gathered together they were terrified they were too much timid because they thought that their leader was captured and because the enemies may okay chase them out so while they were in the room the doors were locked and jesus came and stood among them and he told them peace be with you with that wish jesus comes into the room so you see my dear friends the doors were locked but jesus came into the room so what kind of a body jesus body was after the resurrection that is an important thing we have to look at he showed his hands and his side the disciples were overjoyed because they saw the resurrected lord the previous days they have seen the same lord was suffering during the previous days they have seen their lord was being crucified but today you see that this evening time they are seeing that the resurrected lord is standing just in front of them and they were overjoyed so my dear friends if you personally see the resurrected lord jesus christ you will be overjoyed are you ready to see the resurrected lord today morning time you will look sometimes worried timid unhappy but i can give you an assurance if you personally see the resurrected lord who comes just in front of you and if you are having personal interaction with the resurrected lord you will indeed be overjoyed are you ready to come to such kind of a situation did you ever experience the such kind of a situation today is the right day for that this is the right time for that let us experience the presence of god just in front of us let us experience the presence of jesus in our life in that way let us be joyed and overjoyed overwhelmed with joy in that way we can remove all our worries all our burdens all our problems all our diseases all our financial crises all our difficulties to concentrate on studies are you ready to look at on the face of jesus today morning time if you look at on the face of jesus you will indeed be overjoyed there is no doubt here you see that after seeing the resurrected lord the disciples were indeed overjoyed jesus told them as the father has sent me i am sending you and he breathed on them and he told receive the holy spirit as the father has sent me i am sending you so this is called the johanna in pentecost you know that when we come to the book of acts the pentecost happens on the day of pentecost in acts chapter 2 after jesus is being ascended but in john's gospel we see that the pentecost happens while jesus is still among the disciples it is a little early jesus is assuring them the presence of the holy spirit when the presence of the holy spirit is with you you are okay you are commanded to go and share the gospel of jesus christ so here they are getting the commission what is that commission as the father has sent me i am sending you so my dear friends that is the greatest responsibility that we have to do what is the greatest responsibility doing the mission of god doing the ministry of god it is not only the pastor it is not only the church committee the entire church should go and proclaim the truth of salvation it is the responsibility of all the members of the church to go and preach the gospel of jesus christ 
Jesus' commandment is not only for the pastors, not only for the church committee members. Jesus' commandment is for everybody. It is a sole responsibility entrusted upon us that we should go and proclaim the truth of salvation. We should go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ in different highways and byways so that many may be transformed and come to the light of Jesus Christ. So here we see one amazing thing. What is that? Jesus' body was touchable. Is that Mary is touching Jesus, Thomas is touching Jesus, but at the same time, he was able to enter into a closed room. Okay? So Jesus transformed the body we see here. Okay? He is the Son of God. He is the heavenly Son of God. And he is coming and presenting himself that I am the resurrected Lord. So my dear friends, we are not worshipping a God who is still restricted within the tombs. But rather we are worshipping a God who defeated sin, Satan and death. And he has defeated death on the cross of Calvary. He has defeated sin on the cross of Calvary. He has defeated Satan on the cross of Calvary. If Jesus defeated the powers of this world, why we need to worry? Be happy. Be overjoyed. Be overwhelmed with joy. In that way, let us proceed our Christian journey. With that power, let us go ahead in our educational career. With that power, let us enjoy the presence of Jesus Christ on a day-to-day -day basis in our lives. So my dear friends, on that evening, though Thomas was absent, the disciples were able to see Jesus. And they were overjoyed. After seeing the resurrected Jesus, the disciples were all overjoyed. The fourth important thing, then I will conclude my sermon. Jesus appears to the disciples while Thomas being present. That we see in the next Sunday. Next Sunday. That is what reported in chapter 20, verses 24 till 29. So in John's Gospel, Thomas appears four times. The first time we see Thomas in chapter 11, 16. So what is happening there? During the time of Lazarus' resurrection, Jesus was away from Jerusalem and Bethany. And somebody is giving the sisters of Lazarus, Martha and Mary, sending a message to Jesus. Lord, the one whom you love is ill. He is almost at the verge of death. So Jesus is discussing with his disciples, I am going to raise Lazarus from the death. You see that the other disciples were telling, Lord, don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go to Badani. Because you were confronting persecution there. Don't go there. They are looking for a chance to annihilate you. But you see that Thomas is the only person who is standing with Jesus. He told, let us go with him and die with him. Let us go with him and die with him. That means Thomas was willing to die with Jesus. So my dear friends, are you ready to die with Jesus? Okay, when persecutions come, problems come, difficulties come, are you ready to die with Jesus? Die for Jesus. Here we see Thomas was ready to die with Jesus. He was ready to go to Jerusalem. He was ready to go with Jesus. Irrespective of the problems and difficulties. Such a character was Thomas. The second time we see Thomas in chapter 14 verse 5. There we see that Thomas is asking a very significant question to Jesus. 
Lord, you are talking about a way. What is that way? What you are talking about? That is the time Jesus is revealing one of his significant statements. What is that? I am the way, the truth, and the life. A third time we see Thomas here in chapter 20, 24 till 29. And a fourth time we see in chapter 21, verse 2. So how Thomas comes here? Now Thomas, one of the 12 disciples were not with the disciples when Jesus came first time. The other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. What Mary told to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Now the disciples are telling to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. So is that Mary's personal confession became later on a community confession. Mary's personal confession. What was that confession? I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. That later on became a community confession. Now the disciples together tell unto Thomas, We have seen the Lord. So my dear friends, do you have a personal confession about Jesus? Do you have a personal confession about Jesus? Come with that confession to the community, in the church, and testify that. Let that will become a community confession. That is what we see here. Mary had a personal confession that I have seen the Lord. That later on became a community confession. The disciples together tell, we have seen the Lord. So my dear friends, the resurrected Lord, the story of the resurrection of Jesus is, I have seen the Lord. The disciples together witnessed the resurrected Jesus. They together told, we have seen the Lord. Peter witnessed. The beloved disciple witnessed. The early Christian communities witnessed. They all witnessed the resurrected Lord. And here Mary say, sorry, the disciples say unto Thomas, we have seen the Lord. Now Thomas tells, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe it. That means Thomas always wanted evidence. Thomas was an evidentialist. He was always looking for evidence. That is why whenever he was confronting Jesus, he was asking questions. Sometimes we negatively consider him as a doubting Thomas. Is right? But doubt is a good sign of a good disciple. So we can doubt. We can ask questions. We can ask for evidences. Here Thomas is asking for evidences. How can I believe? From where he is asking evidences? Why he is asking evidences? Because two days before, one week before, he had seen that his own Lord Jesus Christ was being nailed. One week before, he had seen his legs were pierced and nailed. One week before, he had seen he was crowned with a crown of nails. One week before he had seen, his side was pierced. Out of, out of a wounded psyche, he is telling this. What is that? Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hands into his side. I will not believe it. I need evidence. Because I have seen with my eyes how Jesus was suffering. So my dear friends, I don't think that nothing wrong that Thomas okay, asked for evidence. Because he saw this with his own eyes. In that way he was wounded deep within. 
he was wounded deep within out of those wounded psyche he is requiring evidences you see that that is the moment in which jesus again appears after one week and jesus said to the disciples peace be with you is that the previous week evening how jesus appeared to the 10 disciples the same way the following week jesus appears to the disciples this is just to convince thomas this is just to convince thomas jesus was much concerned of thomas and jesus said to thomas put your finger here see my hands reach out your hand and put it into my side stop doubting but rather believe do you think that only thomas doubted all doubted even mary magdalene doubted is right mary magdalene didn't believe that jesus is indeed resurrected she thought that jesus body was stolen peter didn't believe the beloved disciple didn't believe so in that case jesus statement here is not only to thomas but to all those who were unbelieving all those who were doubting so jesus says put your finger here see my hands reach out your hand and put into my side stop doubting but rather believe do you doubt about the resurrection of jesus my dear friends do you doubt okay it is clearly stated that jesus is indeed resurrected you need to believe that thomas believed after seeing the resurrected jesus mary magdalene believed after seeing the resurrected jesus peter believed after seeing the resurrected jesus the beloved disciple believed after seeing the resurrected jesus the 10 disciples believed after seeing the resurrected jesus in that case we are believing without seeing okay so we are more fortunate than all the first century believers that is what thomas says jesus says stop doubting but rather believe so my dear friends today morning time what i wanted to emphasize is we need to believe that our lord jesus is indeed resurrected we need to believe that jesus is here we need to believe jesus can transform me we need to believe jesus can remove all the obstacles from my life we need to believe jesus can heal my diseases we need to believe jesus can remove all the financial struggles in our life we need to believe jesus can save my son we need to believe jesus can save my daughter jesus can save my husband jesus can save my wife jesus can save my parents so my dear friends the resurrected jesus power is omnipotent it is universal it works everywhere and ever it works here if you really believe that jesus is indeed resurrected that is the moment thomas says what my lord and my god this is the most profoundest statement in john's gospel what is that my lord and my god this is the only occasion we see that in john's gospel or in any other books jesus is directly addressed as god so you my dear friends jesus is directly addressed as god who thomas how he came to that full revelation about jesus okay mary magdalene accepted jesus i have seen the lord the 10 disciples accepted jesus as we have should be unique if you come to such kind of a faith stature i am very sure that 
our lord jesus christ is going to honor you our lord jesus christ is going to give you a new hope a new future a new life when we come to the conclusion jesus resurrection is proved through evidences and witnesses is that jesus resurrection is proved through evidences and witnesses let me say this is not a fable this is not an imaginary story this is not a story created by a storyteller but here we see that different people are witnessing different evidences are arrayed our lord jesus christ is in, indeed resurrected our lord jesus christ is a resurrected lord as paul says we preach christ the crucified and we preach christ the resurrected lord do you believe that jesus is here today do you believe that the resurrected jesus is here today let us all rise up let us pray for a while let us experience the power of resurrection today morning time let us affirm our faith in the resurrected lord lord jesus we surrender ourselves into thy mighty hand often we unbelieve you often we distract from your faith often we go away from the faith of our lord jesus christ lord we confess and understand and accept that we are sinners we are unworthy people we are indeed worldly sometimes lord at this moment we acknowledge and accept with evidences and witnesses that you have indeed resurrected you are there to cleanse my sins you are there to wash away my sins and iniquities you are there to give me a new hope you are there to give me a new future you are there to make me financially sound you are there to give me the power of the holy spirit you are there to give me peace because you told peace be with you lord at this moment we are giving ourselves to the mighty hand thank you for enabling us to understand the power of the resurrected lord through evidences and witnesses we submit ourselves to the mighty hand in the sweet and matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen